welcome to the White Glove Demo for Caverna, the Cave Farmers. In Caverna, you take charge of a small family of dwarves, trying to make a comfortable and prosperous life for themselves in the mountains through a mix of farming, mining, and adventuring. Your goal is to turn a small furnished cave and a patch of wild forest into the biggest and wealthiest homestead on the mountain. Welcome to your new home, Glover. Okay, so it's not much to look at right now, but it just needs a little work. Maybe a few furnishings to start? Alright, maybe a couple of pets to brighten the place up? Ha! I figured a puppy would chew you up. The gameplay of Caverna is split between the central action board, where your dwarves go to work and forage, and each player's home board, where you build your home and work your forests. To set up, give everyone a home board, along with five dwarf discs and three stables. Two of your dwarves start in the entry-level dwelling on your home board. Set your remaining dwarves and stables off to one side. They're still waiting to be born and built. Additionally, give each player two player aid cards, one for rubies and harvests, one for weapons and expeditions. Randomly choose someone to start and give that player one food. The next player clockwise also starts with one food. The third player starts with two food, and everyone else gets three food. Next, assemble the central boards based on the number of players. Each board section is labeled in the upper left corner. We'll use the three-player board today. Place a random harvest event token on each space with this symbol, and place the harvest events card next to the board. Next, build the action card deck. Shuffle the round four cards and place them next to the board. Then place the round three cards on top of the deck, then the round two cards, the wish for children card, and the round one cards. Next, place the four furnishing boards next to the central board. These boards are double-sided. For your first game, use the sides that have fewer spaces. Sort the furnishing tiles onto their matching spaces. There should be multiple dwelling tiles and only one of everything else. Lastly, sort the landscape tiles and place them near the central board. Note that these tiles are all double-sided, representing different features you can build. Now you're ready to play. Uh, Glover, we're ready to play. Glover? Uh, okay. Well, we still need to set up for the first round. I guess we'll get back to you? At the start of each round, add the top card of the action deck to the central board. Then, add resources to each of the accumulating spaces on the board. Accumulating spaces are marked with this arrow symbol and gain the listed amount of resources each turn. These spaces will build up resources over time. Some accumulating spaces have two resource numbers listed. Place the first number of resources on the space if the space is empty, and the second number of resources in parentheses if the space still has some resources on it. Once you're set up for the round, your dwarves can go to work. Beginning with the starting player, welcome back, Glover. Take turns moving one dwarf from your home board to an empty space on the action board and taking the associated resources and actions. Each action space can only hold one dwarf each round, so plan ahead. Many of the action spaces give you various resource tokens. These spaces include both accumulating resources and static resources. When you place a dwarf on a space with accumulating resources, you take all the resources that have built up on that space. When you claim a space with static resources, you simply take the listed resources from the bank. Pay special attention to spaces that give you rubies. Rubies act as a wild resource. At any time, you can trade out a ruby for almost any other resource, as listed on the ruby player aid card. Some action spaces let you build a landscape tile on your home board. These spaces show what kind of tile you can build and what you can build them over. Caverns and tunnels go on the mountain half of your home board where your dwarves live. Fields and meadows replace the forest half of your home board. 
you must build new landscape tiles next to what you've already built, expanding outwards from your entry-level dwelling. Some squares give you a bonus resource as soon as you build a new landscape tile over them. Additionally, you'll need to build some landscape tiles, like mines, on top of other tiles you've already built. More specifically, some action spaces let you furnish a cavern. Furnishing tiles are special tiles which can only be built on caverns. Each furnishing tile gives you a special ability, as well as some victory points. When an action lets you furnish a cavern, choose any available furnishing tile, pay the listed cost, and place it on top of an empty cavern. Each furnishing tile is unique. Once you buy one, no one else can buy another copy of the same tile, except for the basic dwelling tiles, which have an unlimited supply. Dwellings are a special kind of furnishing which can house additional dwarves. If you have more available dwellings than you have dwarves, you can make use of a Wish for Children action space. When you take this action, place one of your spare dwarves on top of the proud new parent. This new dwarf will be ready to help out the family on the next round. Some actions let you sow crops in your fields. To sow crops, take up to two grain and two vegetable from your personal supply and plant them in empty fields. Then, fill up each field with extras from the general supply, three grain total in each grain field and two vegetables in each veggie field. You'll collect some of these crops later in the harvest phase. Some action spaces let you build pastures and stables to house your animals. Unlike your other resources, your farm animals need a place to live. When you take the Build Pastures and Stables action, you may turn one meadow into a small pasture, and you may also turn two neighboring meadows into a large pasture. Each small pasture can hold two animals of the same type, and each large pasture can hold four animals of the same type. This action also lets you build one stable. A stable doubles the number of animals a given pasture can hold. You have a few more options for housing your animals. You can keep one animal in a stable in a meadow. You can also keep one wild boar in a stable in the forest. Each mine in your cave can hold one donkey, and you can leave sheep in an empty meadow if you have enough dogs to watch over them. You can have one more sheep in a field than you have dogs in that field. And your dogs will live basically anywhere. You can have as many dogs as you like. Um, uh-oh. Me and my big mouth. Last, let's talk about forging weapons and going on expeditions. When you place an unarmed dwarf on a forge action, pay up to 8 ore to give that dwarf a weapon of the matching strength. Armed dwarves can then take expedition actions. Going on expeditions can earn you a whole range of rewards. The expedition will give you the listed number of prizes, and you can take any prizes from the list that are equal to or less than your weapon strength. But you may only take one of each reward on a single adventure. Also, each adventure makes your dwarf a little stronger, increasing his weapon strength by one. But those big weapons are heavy and slow your dwarf down. In future turns, you must send your dwarves to work in order, from weakest to strongest, unless you pay one ruby to let a dwarf skip ahead in the line. <laughs> Got all that, Glover? Okay, I'm making it sound more complicated than it really is. You've only got two dwarves and about half the action spaces to start with. Take turns placing your dwarves on the spaces until you run out in order to get resources and tiles for your board. If you get new dwarves or animals, you'll need to make sure they have a place to live on your board. Once all the dwarves have been placed, return them to their respective home boards. That's it. That's the whole work phase. After the work phase, most rounds also have a harvest phase, indicated by this green leaf symbol. Three things happen in the harvest phase. First, collect the top grain or vegetable from each of your fields. 
Then you have to feed your dwarves, pay two food tokens for each adult dwarf, and one food for each baby dwarf, born during the previous action phase. Note that you can convert your resources into food tokens at any time, according to the chart on the bottom of your home board. If you can't feed your family, you'll have to go begging for food. Take one begging token for each missing food. Begging tokens will cost you three victory points each at the end of the game. Lastly, you may breed your animals. Check each type of farm animal other than dogs. If you have at least two of that animal, you get one more for free, provided you have the space to house it somewhere. Starting with round six, the harvests will happen randomly. Flip over the harvest token at the start of the round. A green leaf icon means you'll have a normal harvest. A red question mark means you'll have a special event instead. Place the event token on the next available space on the event card and follow the instructions for the harvest phase. After the work and harvest phases, the round is over. Place a new card on the central board, refill the accumulating spaces, and start a new round, beginning with the first player. After 12 rounds, the game is over. Use the included score pad to add up your scores. You'll gain points for your tiles, your dwarves, and your resources, and lose points for any begging markers you have, empty spaces on the board, or animals that you don't own. The player with the highest total score wins the game. And that's Caverna the Cave Farmers, a wonderfully deep game of growing and building for one to seven players. So Glover, how's your cave looking? You, you spent everything on dogs, didn't you? Look, someone's gonna have to feed all these mouths and it's not gonna be me.